it will be available on the NASIO website for playback in the near future. So look forward to that, and we'll be sending out, again, additional correspondence about that. So again, we have a great lineup of speakers today, but before we, we get to those, let me spend a few minutes talking about the reality of data in the public sector, particularly those of you who are in the government sector it's at the federal, state, and local level. I want to make sure that uh, we all recognize that the data certainly is the lifeblood of, of government enterprises, yet we all recognize that we've got a lot of challenges to face, including sharing data across agencies and jurisdictions, and we've all, all faced this. I think most importantly, among the many issues, we lack a common vocabulary, and that's particularly uh, been the problem because of the silos of information and data that are collected by the various domains or the lines of business within government. For many years, and to really address this challenge, NASIO recommends that, that state government particularly, which is our area of jurisdiction, adopt NEAM capabilities as a component of state government enterprise architecture and as part of their overarching data management strategy. Uh, we've been a long time uh, advocate of NEAM and as an advocate of architecture and policies and technology to support government information sharing, NASIO has been actively uh, uh, promoting NEAM uh, since its inception and even back in, in, in its history when it was the GJXDM, which is a wonderful acronym that we're glad we're not using any longer, which talked about the global information exchange. So I think that's important to understand that NEAM has, has been around. And the real genesis of NEAM started with a state and local governments as an effort, a part of their federal, state, and, and local interaction and collaboration to share information and really started within the, the justice community many years ago. In fact, in 2015, we celebrated a decade of NEAM. It's hard to believe, but a decade of NEAM and the value it brings to standardizing information exchanges. And we have lots of great examples uh, that could be shared around NEAM, and I encourage you to go to the NEAM.gov website uh, to, again to look at those. Today, I think we, we look at NEAM as a strong community of users and contributors with a growing list of those domains, those lines of business that will be able to share information as these information exchange the packages are developed, and that's very, very important. On the government affairs front, uh, NEAM is included in NASIO's 2016 federal advocacy priorities, and we urge Congress to ensure appropriate funding to support information sharing and more importantly, the federal government continue to support NEAM so that the model can evolve and grow. And we really would like to see broader adoption of NEAM at the federal, state, and local government level. And we certainly have a number of vendors and private companies that have developed NEAM as part of their product set. And we applaud them as well because that will simply allow the environment to grow even, even broader. So again, it's now international with NEAM use in Canada, Mexico, Japan, Australia, and other countries. And again, we certainly like to see that drop adoption. So I'm going to end my opening remarks here. But before we move on to the next portion of our webinar and introduce our, our guest speakers, I have two quick polling questions on information sharing for you, the participants. So we'll put those polling questions up, question number four and question number five. And so if you could, please take a minute to, uh, to, to respond to those, and you will see the live polling results as you respond to those questions. I think as we watch these polling results, it's not surprising to us anyway that legal and privacy issues are some of the major constraints around sharing information. This is something certainly NASIO has articulated in some of our research briefs. And I think skill sets, uh, particularly at the state and local level, continue to be a challenge. And question number five, uh, again, repeatable processes. Again, consistency uh, is very, very important in having a structured framework. NEAM brings that to this environment. That's very important as well. Looks like a high number of, of votes for that category. Well, very good. So let's close the poll out now. And again, we'll have, uh, 
more information on how to address uh, both these opportunities and challenges as we go through uh, our webinar this afternoon. For several years, uh, I've had the honor of representing NASIO and uh, state government interests uh, as the ex officio member of the NEEM Executive Steering Council. And I've been able to interact with the NEEM Program Management Office, the PMO, and their leadership there, and, and the staff, and it's always been a, a pleasure to do so. Very competent uh, set of individuals leading this effort and uh, championing the cause. With that, uh, I'd like to introduce Donna Roy. Donna is the Executive Director of the NEEM PMO. And she's had a distinguished career in both the public and private sector and has been with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security since 2006. And again, as I mentioned, she's the executive director uh, of the NEEM PMO. She's a real champion for change and promoting the value of government data and been recognized, again, at the federal level for uh, what she brings to uh, the, that, this space and, again, leading the NEEM initiative. And that's very, very important. So, uh, with that, Donna, you have the con. I'm going to turn it over to you for your remarks and um, on the value of NEEM. Great. Um, thank you, Doug, and thank you for um, co-hosting this seminar with us or this uh, webinar. Um, in addition to being the executive director for NEEM, my day job is really leading the information sharing technology projects for the Department of Homeland Security. So information sharing is near and dear to my heart. Interesting, your polls indicate sort of the same challenges we have here today in the department around privacy, legal, and uh, repeatability of exchanges. Um, in my daytime role, I've been working with the NEEM community for almost a decade. Uh, and this is what I've learned about the value of NEEM for information sharing and increasing information sharing. So in order to connect communities across this country, practitioners from all walks of life, all disciplines, working together to make the government more efficient for its citizens, more impactful services for its at-risk populations and to deliver better technology, we need a common language to describe what we know are the same things. And so how a federal or state social security department describes me, Donna Roy, to administer benefits or to keep track of payments into the system may be different than how the Department of Motor Vehicles describes me so they can give me a license. It's the same Donna Roy, but how they describe me and how they capture information about me is very different. Um, when m me or one of my family members applies for health care, um, health insurance based on the Affordable Care Act, uh, the information about me is described differently across many organizations, and yet they need to get information about me, uh, synthesize that information about me to make sure that I'm eligible for um, some of these benefits. And so they verify my income, they verify my Social Security benefits, my citizenship, um, same Donna, different descriptions of Donna Roy in every one of these agencies. I am one person. I see myself as uh, having one set of information, but each agency interacts with, that I interact with, any agency that I apply benefit for, um, this is sort of my uh, passion for name. I should not have to fill out 80 or more forms across a myriad of citizenship benefits. Citizenship, 80 forms. And we uh, sort of uh, have lots of opportunities for people to refill out information. I should not have to fill out 60 or more types of forms, my name and 60 forms, to gain disaster assistance during a catastrophic event. I probably don't even know where my wallet is, and um, typing all that information is just, uh, just additional angst as a citizen. I should not have to wonder if my information is being correctly understood by the agencies who share it when any of these events happen in my life. Will each one of these agencies get it right? Will I get what I need if they don't, right? And yet, I don't. We're, we're not where we're, we're we're not where we're at. Like I, like I, I want us to be after 10 years. But let me tell you, we've made a lot of progress. Millions of transactions per year, maybe even more billions, are processed in really complex environments between legacy systems that are probably older than I am and connecting to new innovative technologies. Um, in a lot of those transactions, millions and millions of them, uh, NEEM is the common language that's being used to integrate data across hundreds of data sources for the common good, right? NEEM is a common language. So over the years, we've heard of projects that include collaboration across agencies within a jurisdiction, across jurisdictions, or across international boundaries. So NEEM is used to pass information as an example to and from a patrol car during a routine traffic stop. So I get stopped, perhaps I was going too fast, 
they check not only for outstanding warrants, but they check the validity of my driver's license. They also check, you know, for police officer safety purposes and other law enforcement purposes to make sure that the person seated in the car or other people seated in the car are not known or suspected terrorists, right? Um, NEMA is being used to exchange information between the U.S. and Canada during routine border crossings. And we're, we're finding out is that when one person exits one country and treats another, that's sort of efficient way to trans transact those things. NEMA is being used to facilitate exchanges of information in New York to serve its 8 million residents to apply for more than 35 city, state, and federal human service benefits, right, making it easier for New York City to serve its citizens and get benefits. NEMA is used in Europe. This is pretty awesome. I've been to Europe a few times. They're using it to share warrant information uh, when exchanging case data across country borders. It's not just a system-to-system -system connectivity, but there are countries in Europe that are less technically capable. They're sharing it embedded in Word documents um, when they're sort of emailing them around so that when a country that has the IT capability receives that Word document, they can automatically ingest it, right? So, so it's not just machine to machine. There's a lot of innovative ways that we're using NEAM. NEAM is also being used to uh, apply for disaster assistance. And so that case I talked about, um, sometimes we get three or more sort of transactions a year uh, based on how bad the weather is across 17 government agencies through a single online application. I can now put my data in once, and I can apply for multiple benefits during a disaster. So probably don't know where my wallet is, but at least I only have to enter my name once. Um, and that's a good government uh, approach to solving um, the angst around our citizens and entering data. We have heard stories about the value of NEEM over the years. Uh, some agencies claim these as bragging rights, right? So uh, uh, up to 50% drop in emergency response, saving lives because seconds and minutes matter during um, uh, uh, like a heart attack. Over 200% improvement in data quality because we've reduced human data entry in these exchanges. We have instantaneous access um, to data for our officers on the street, enhancing their citizen, enhancing their safety and the citizens um, that they are um, serving. 50% um, decrease in the time required for testing through the use of open source tools, automated testing, saving time, right? This is sort of big on today's agile open source implementation. The more we automate exchanges, the more we can automate testing, the more we can save time in the implementation, which um, gets us to a faster delivery of capability. So in summary, information sharing for me is about ensuring not only the dissemination of the information to make these transactions more effective, but it's also ensuring that the information is understood by all parties. I know Donna Roy is Donna Roy across all of those transactions, and that the information is trusted across all parties, and that it's immediately actionable. Right, so sharing information helps us do, us do our work in this complex world of IT. Using NEAM increases our speed at which we can meet our citizens' expectations on routine transactions. Making government as easy as Amazon.com transactions is a pretty good goal. It also helps us increase our speed to actionable intelligence to protect our country. Uh, so what is NEAM? I'd like to hand it over to uh, Christina Bapp, the current Managing Director for the NEAM program, who's going to give you an overview for those of you who answered, I'm not sure what NEAM is, or I'm not using NEAM in my organization yet. Um, and so, Christina? Thanks, Donna. I'm thrilled to be here with you all today to talk about NEAM. Um, so let's jump into the general overview. Um, uh, NEAM is a community-driven, standards-based approach to exchanging information. At its core is that common vocabulary that both Doug and Donna referred to that enables organizations, whether they're local, state, federal, tribal, private sector, or international, to be able to share information. The challenges we face today cut across various sectors, lines of business, organizations, often requiring collaboration between and across all levels of government, as well as industry. NEAM brings together these diverse communities to collectively leverage tools, processes, and technologies that ultimately increase efficiencies and improve decision making. The foundation for all information sharing is data. Ensuring that all partners of an exchange can understand each other's data is critical. Um, a high level example, for example, uh, maybe you drink soda and I drink pop. 
The problem is, even though we're both talking about sweet, sweet fizzy beverages, our computers treat my pop as entirely different from your soda. The, true, uh, the same is true for real world examples, such as you know, um, some cities and states across the country have ports. If I say vessel and you say boat, but he says ship and somebody else says conveyance, we may mean the same thing, but we have no way to tell our computer systems to behave and treat those words as having the same meaning. This is where the standards-based approach to exchanging information comes in. You don't have to change your language. You can still call that fizzy beverage soda, which is great for legacy systems that folks have with 30 years of data about soda. But if you want to exchange information with me about my pop, we'll have to agree to call that fizzy beverage the same word, such as soft drink. In this slide, uh, the data interoperability challenge is, ensur is ensuring that different developers have a compatible understanding of the data to be exchanged, because if the people on the left have a different understanding than the people on the right, then something will be broken and someone's going to be unhappy. This is the, the idea behind NEAM. It's letting your system and my system speak, even if they've never spoken before. NEAM ensures that information is well understood and carries the same consistent meaning across various communities, allowing interoperability to occur. Um, first off, it's important to note that NEAM is not, for those, for those new to NEAM, NEAM is not a system, a database, software, or the actual exchange itself. Rather, NEAM is a standard way of defining the contents of a message being exchanged. For example, uh, here on the slide, three organizations identify the need to exchange information. Their information, though similar, is defined differently. All organizations have a concept of a person's last name, for example. Here, one refers to it as last name, while another refers to it as surname. It's the same concept, but different defining terms. Using NEAM, the organizations are able to come together to agree on a common vocabulary. NEAM provides this consistent starting point, saving time and money by the organizations um, coming together to share information. When additional organizations, perhaps a fourth or a fifth or even a 20th partner or system, needs to be added to this information exchange, the initial NEAM-based exchange can be reused, also saving time and money. The beauty of NEAM is that um, it, is, it can be used across multiple partners and or legacy systems. It's not dictated by the, by the technologies the organizations use. It is technology agnostic as well as you know, it's something that can be used within a single organization or across many organizations at all levels of government. For example, um, you know, this is city to state exchanges, state to state, state to federal. Even just recently, um, we've had our first uh, tribal um, use case that has been developed. The, uh, the human services community led by the Administration for Children and Families, ACF, um, within the Department of Health and Human Services finished an information exchange to support state to state tribe to state and state the tribe for child support enforcement data between um, the model tribal system and state and tribal child support enforcement systems. And that's exciting because that's the first um, use case that we've heard about NEAM kind of being used within the tribal community, which is very exciting that um, you know, not only are we, are we now bridging the local and state, but, um, but tribal as well. So the big picture, how NEAM works, uh, there are two core concepts that we use to explain how NEAM works. Uh, first, the M in NEAM stands for model, which is the common vocabulary that, that we keep referring to. Um, the model is the collective representation of the many communities that leverage NEAM. Uh, this is where NEAM provides a consistent set of data definitions, um, as well as a structure to define the relationships between them. The diverse communities that leverage NEAM collaboratively govern the model. Uh, community subject matter experts are the ones who actually develop the content in NEAM to meet their community-specific needs. As those needs evolve, NEAM also allows for flexibility and growth, um, onboarding of new domains, updating content, um, and revisions, and architecture improvements, and things of like that. The second core concept is the exchange development lifecycle, and this is the repeatable, reusable process for using um, the NEAM model to define an information exchange and the content within it.
by now you're probably wondering what does the model look like. Um, so let's take a look. So uh, for those um, non-technical on the call, so words are to the dictionary as elements are to a data model. Um, the NEEM data model provides common agreed upon terms, definitions, and formats independent of how information is stored in individual systems. It consists of two closely related vocabularies, NEEM core and, in, and the individual NEEM domains. NEEM core consists of these data elements that are commonly understood across all domains, such as person, place, activity, location, um, the, the, the basic elements uh, that kind of make up what we do. Um, a NEEM domain represents both the governance and the model content oriented around a community's business needs. This is that list below. It's the, it's the biometrics, it's the immigration, it's the human services. The domains manage their portion of the NEEM model as well as work with other domains to collaboratively identify areas of overlapping interest. As a community, community member of NEEM, your involvement and use of the model could span one or more domains. Um, you also don't need to be aligned to an existing NEEM domain to use NEEM, as a, the vast majority of the core elements are universal and applicable um, to many or all. The beauty of NEEM is that uh, everything we've kind of talked about is all available in the public domain and free to use uh, by anyone, local, state, tribal, federal, international, private, private sector. Um, on the more technical side, uh, the program is exploring um, how we can incorporate emerging technologies to best meet the needs of the current and future, future users of NEEM. For example, uh, one example is JSON, which is heavily used to support information exchange in mobile environments. Um, another technology is the unified modeling language UML, which provides a model-based visual for greater inclusion of uh, business users. Um, one note I wanted to make about UML is there are commercially available tools that implement uh, the NEEM UML profile that we've recently um, completed, and those and all known tools um, to help aid in NEEM adoption are found on the NEEM.gov tools catalog. Uh, the permanent URL is uh, NEEM.gov backslash tools, uh, as well as you can easily get to it on the home page. As, uh, as you begin to use NEEM, or perhaps your organization already uses NEEM, um, the program management office is very interested um, in ensuring that we uh, understand how we can best address uh, evolving community needs. And so please, you know, let us know um, as you are adventuring into new emerging technologies to keep us in the loop so that we can continue to ensure that the model and the architecture around it um, also evolves to meet those needs. Uh, some folks might be wondering how is this model maintained? Um, and maintenance and evolution of the model is uh, we have a formally established release cycle. The next version of the model is actually currently out in beta. It is NEEM 3.2, and it's available for public review and comment through this coming Friday, April 15th. Um, 3.2 incorporates some substantial content edits within the emergency management community, um, biometrics, and several others. Uh, more information on that can be found at NEEM.gov. The, the last part of this slide is that future domains, and future domains are added to NEEM as necessary based on an established business need. Um, the, the last domain that is listed there on the list is surface transportation, which is a very timely example. The Department of Transportation uh, recently established the surface transportation domain, which is coming in the upcoming NEEM 3.2 release that I just referred to, and we are very excited to welcome them to the NEEM community. Uh, a very positive step towards building out the transportation domain content. Um, Dan Morgan, the Chief Data Officer at Department of Transportation, has been working collaboratively with um, other domains, such as Justice and Emergency Management, to um, identify and kind of take over stewardship of some of the transportation-related content that's already in the model, um, such as crash-related uh, items. The, uh, some of those domains are, are very happy DOT is onboarding, and they can take over uh, proper ownership of some of the transportation materials. But um, what, what I want to note is uh, we happen to have DOT on the webinar with us today. And um, with that said, I would like to introduce the Department of Transportation's Chief Technology Officer, Maria Rote, who I, who I am uh, pleased could join us today to speak with you all. Maria. 
Thanks, Christina. Um, this is uh, Department of Transportation. Very excited to be joining the NEEM effort as part of Release 3.2, as um, you just indicated. Um, we have a lot going on in the in the NEEM space, and from a DOT perspective, really safety is our number one priority. And when we look at you know our first release for the surface transport transportation domain, you know we're focusing in on crashes. So, for example, when there's a crash on the road, there's a whole slew of government services that, that really launch into action. So from the dispatchers, whether it's, you know, your 911 or whoever's the dispatcher answering calls, you know, to the law enforcement officers who arrive on the scene, uh, to the EMS services um, for potentially caring for any victims if there's any injuries and in the crashes. So the timely exchange of that quality data and information is essential, you know, making sure people get the care they need, whether it's, you know, from the ambulance perspective or with law enforcement or whatever that might be. So all of that information that's exchanged as part of the response really forms the basis for the crash record. And it's ultimately linked up with the data about the road where the crash occurred. So it's linked up where the crash occurred, any citations or court adjudications, you know, driver records. You know, Donna talked about, uh, you know, a driver's license and other information. And then also sometimes hospital records, you know, if there's um, injuries and follow up on that, you know, from a safety perspective, where did the indus industry happen? How did, how did the injury happen? And all of that information that goes with it. So, you know, all of that information is linked. And which is really why we're focused on the crash records as part of the first release of the surface transportation domain. So you'll see in there data elements that describe the roads um, that are included on the, on the new uh, domain. You'll also see updates to our guidelines for the minimum data content to collect about a crash. Um, uh, we call it MUC, the uh, Model Minimum Uniform Crash Criteria, so MUC. So that's really the minimum data to collect about a crash. So really from a transportation perspective, you can see where it intersects the other NEEM domains, you know, just like uh, justice, courts, emergency management, and health. And there was that, you know, list Christina had on the slide. But you can see where transportation intersects all of those. Um, you know, and another example, uh, our Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration so we connected with the National Law Enforcement Telecommunication Systems, uh, the NLETS, to provide law enforcement officers with uh, even more information about trucks and bus companies so that there's a connection there as well. And in addition to the queries about vehicle that you know, law enforcement can perform, um, they can now check whether we've placed a carrier out of, in an out of service order or even targeted them for inspection. So law enforcement has you know, access to that information. And ultimately, this really drives to help keep our roads safe. Back to what I said earlier, safety is our number one priority. So over the next uh, coming months, we're going to continue to grow the surface transformation, transportation domain. Um, we're going to focus on the information exchanges, important for certainly our state, local, and tribal transportation, and our emergency medical services partners. Um, we certainly work, look forward to working with groups like the NASCO to provide the right kind of expertise. We want to support the team and as, as they certainly work to implement the NEEM-based information exchanges. So with that, um, I will turn it back over to Donna. Thank you, Maria. Um, this is the fifth time I have gotten to do this. I love this part of my job. It's now time. Uh, that you've been waiting for, the announcements of the Best of NEEM for 2015 awards. We're very excited to reveal this year's winners, especially because the, pro the projects are state and locally focused, right? That we raise the bar every year. We have these awards, and it's harder and harder to get one of these. But uh, let's take a moment to look back at some of the prestigious Best of NEEM awards and their outstanding contributions. And so there's a Hall of Fame um, that talks about um, the NEEM program accepting nominations that uh, recognize exemplary NEEM projects. And so you have to have done it in the year we're opening up the best of NEEMs. Um, it has to be implemented, has to be intergovernmental, has to be innovative, um, it has to improve performance and increase efficiency. It's not just cool, but it has to actually make good government happen, and you have to be able to measure that, right? So we, we have a pretty high bar. 
Um, the uh, winners are joining this impressive group that have passed that bar. So all of these projects have hailed from federal, state, and local organizations. They address critical information exchanges across a variety of mission spaces, ranging from criminal justice to health to disaster assistance and family services. Each project has demonstrated specific measurable results and a dedication to advancing, substantially improving the way NEAM is used for cross-boundary government. So they don't just do it for themselves. They do it and make sure it's useful to other communities to adopt. Reuse is built into the way we think in the NEAM community. Um, congratulations again to all of the Hall of Fame uh, winners. Um, uh, I, uh, I'm impressed every time I look at that list. So, and now, it is with great pleasure that I announce the first winner for this round of the Best of NEEM Awards. And the winner is, yay, the Kansas Criminal Justice Information System. So congratulations, you're the Best of NEEM winner. Um, the Kansas Bureau of Inf Investigation and the Kansas Department of Transportation utilize the Criminal Justice Information System to improve electronic disposition reporting for DUI offenses. Dispositions, including DUI offenses, document the final status of that process that begins with a law enforcement contact at the time of the offense and ends with a court finding. The system improves access to crucial, up-to-date information that helps prevent criminal and keep communities safe from impaired driving. This project empowers public safety agencies to make informed, timely decisions that can improve public safety, transportation safety, prevent DOIs, and even save lives. So in the past, approximately 18,000 dispositions per month had to be sent on paper and entered manually into the state's criminal history repository, which resulted in many inefficiencies. I bet you some data quality issues, too. Now that uh, the system, the state and local agencies can submit and store critical public safety information electronically, including these DOI dispositions. So the disposition, dispositions that once took three and a half to six and a half years now just take two months to make sure that they're available. And because that data is no longer entered manually, the quality and accuracy of that information can, continues to increase. So I want to congratulate the Kansas Bureau of Investigation State of Kansas Traffic Records Coordinating Committee, the Traffic Safety Manager, and the Kansas Department of Transportation on this accomplishment. So congratulations, Canada. Canada, Kansas, I'm sorry. Allow me to introduce Joe Mandala, the CIO for the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, accepting the award on behalf of the Kansas team. Joe? Thank you very much. Um, I think this is the part where I say a few words about the project. Yes, sir. Um, in 2011, uh, the Kansas DUI Commission uh, brought this this problem to us. Basically, they published a report, and and this I know this sounds like a long time ago, but in in the, the land of the government, when a problem was presented maybe four years ago, it doesn't really seem like that long. Um, where they had a problem where DUI dispositions in the state weren't really being uh, processed uh, quickly enough. Uh, in Kansas, as in many states, DUIs uh, are a cumulative uh, offense, meaning that uh, first, second, third, fourth, et cetera, uh, offenses on DUIs um, increase in severity as you go forward. And it's important for prosecutors to know uh, which number of DUI an, an offender is on in order to actually prosecute a case correctly. And this was a significant problem that the, that the DUI Commission brought forward to us. Um, the DUI Commission then worked through the, the Traffic Records Coordinating Committee, the TRCC here in the state, um, and then came to us at the KBI, at the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, um, decided to use case aegis, uh, as was mentioned, uh, as the most efficient, effective method to solve the problem. Uh, TRCC launched an exhaustive feasibility study um, I'm, I'm bringing all this up because while NEAM is a, is a great tool to solve a problem like this, um, it does not, not a silver bullet, you still have to go through all the normal stuff that you, you go through in order to solve these kinds of problems. Uh, we brought in a partner, uh, a vendor partner, Analyst International, 
in my agency, the, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation and TRCC were able to execute um, that very complicated and, and long-term project. And I say that it was is complicated because it did not include just uh, the disposition piece. And we decided to include more than just DUIs. And because of what NEAM offered us, uh, we included all dispositions in the state. Um, NEAM offers, uh, offered us a unique opportunity to build a, a disposition interface that would allow all of our partners and the courts and the prosecutors to submit dispositions of all kinds to us, to our criminal history repository, uh, thus improving the outcomes for all of our partners, law enforcement, courts, um, health and human services across the board, and not just for the DUI commission, but for, for all of the people that rely on those criminal histories to make decisions day in and day out. Um, I will say that the impact of adoption has been dramatic. Um, some of the stats and numbers that, that you may have seen or will see here shortly uh, have continued to improve. Um, time to entry has dropped significantly. The number of submissions has increased significantly. Uh, metrics on data and quality improvement are looking good. We don't have real solid numbers yet, but we do know that uh, there is a marked increase in, in data quality. Um, overall, outcomes that were put forward by the DUI Commission have been achieved by, that, by this project, by the RAPID project. Uh, the electronic disposition interface and its uh, counterpart uh, user interface move forward uh, successfully thanks to the hard work of the team involved in the project. Um, thanks in large part uh, to the adoption of NEAM. Um, we are also realizing some real world benefits at strategic and operational levels that I don't think we otherwise have been able to achieve. Um, I would also point out something that I haven't seen mentioned so far in the presentations. Um, are the IEPD or the sort of the, uh, the specifications for the interface for our project have been published in, in something called the NEAM Clearinghouse. And on that NEAM website, NEAM.gov, there's a clearinghouse for uh, all of the NEAM successful NEAM projects that have been done so far. And, and people are welcome to go there and then look at what's been done so far and use or adopt or modify previous projects and that long list of of, of award winners in the past, almost all of those projects are, are out there for people to look at and change and adopt to their own uses. Um, again, um, NEAM has been very useful for us. Um, it's allowed us to build a single interface that all of our partners can utilize uh, instead of having to build a, a bunch of single point um, interfaces to the hundreds of different, or the almost 2,000 uh, different partners we've got on this project. Um, so I thank uh, the consortium for having put it out there. I thank all of our partners for making the project a success. And I, and I thank the, uh, the NEAM folks for, for recognizing the work we did on the project. And uh, we're going to show you a quick video um, that it sort of encapsulates this uh, success story. information electronically. Traffic Record Coordinating Committee Electronic Disposition Reporting DUIs and Traffic Safety Story. Sharing timely and accurate information is crucial when it comes to public safety and crime prevention, including keeping communities safe from drunk and drug driving. When a driver gets pulled over for a traffic violation, like a suspected DUI, Law enforcement needs complete current information about the driver's criminal history, such as if they have a DUI offense in other counties or have an outstanding warrant. This information helps law enforcement make an informed decision in the name of public safety, and it plays a key role in criminal judgments, public safety education, enforcement, legislation, and emergency medical services. But how can public agencies get and share the information they need to keep their communities safe from impaired drivers? This was a problem that the state of Kansas wanted to solve. In the past, the state did not have a standardized way for state and local agencies to submit disposition information electronically. And many local agencies 
lacked any method of locally storing dispositions electronically. Dispositions, including for DOI offenses, document the final status of the process, which begins with law enforcement contact at the time of an offense and ends with a final court finding. Approximately 18,000 dispositions per month had to be sent on paper and entered manually into the state's computerized criminal history repository, which requires a lot of time and resources. In fact, for some dispositions, the time between an offense and entry into the criminal history repository can take between three and a half to six and a half years. This kept public safety agencies from making informed, timely decisions that could improve transportation safety, prevent DUI, and even save lives. To improve the process of standardizing and sharing criminal history information throughout the state, the Kansas Bureau of Investigation uses and maintains KCGIS, the Kansas Criminal Justice Information System, which provides access to criminal and traffic records, crash data, and DMV driver and vehicle data. Following findings by the Kansas DUI Commission, the KBI partnered with the Kansas Department of Transportation and utilized KCGIS to improve electronic disposition reporting for DUI offenses, and it's had an immediate impact on the speed and quality of DUI data. Within just 30 days of the launch of electronic disposition reporting, the state saw a 7.2% drop in the time it took to process dispositions of all kinds, dispositions that once could take years between first contact by police and entry into the criminal history repository now take an average of just over two months. Also, because the data is no longer entered manually, the quality of the information continues to increase. KCGIS is on its way to becoming a national model for full integration of criminal and transportation information. The system is now available in nearly 1,500 local state and federal agencies, as well as prosecutors, law enforcement officials, social service agencies, and more. NEAM helped make electronic disposition reporting possible for TRCC. It serves as the data layer foundation for turning a time-consuming, paper-based system into an efficient, web-based system that allows many different agencies to submit, access, and share standardized DUI disposition data. NEAM enables the efficient and comprehensive sharing of information that is critical to keeping communities safe, saving time, money, and manpower by providing consistent, reusable data terms and definitions. And that's the power of NEAM. Thank you again uh, for submitting that. Um, it's really um, heartwarming to know that we're working on some of society's biggest problems. DUIs are, are a big issue in every one of our states and every one of our cities. Um, so the next NEAM, Best of NEAM winner, um, uh, goes to um, the Valencia County, Florida, Kirk Circuit Court. The is it Valencia? Did I say that right? Yes. A county Florida clerk of the circuit court. Comprehensive case information system, CCIS 3.0. Congratulations, you're a best of NEAM 2005. So in an effort to standardize and centralize crucial court data and case files across the state, the clerk of the circuit court piloted a CCIS 3.0. Previously, there was no way to access local court data on a real-time statewide basis in Florida. Instead, data was collected in many different systems, resulting in inaccuracies and resource inefficiencies. The 3.0 pilot addressed this challenge and facilitated information exchange across Florida's 20 circuit courts, 67 clerk offices, and more. The CCIS enables diverse organizations and state agencies such as public defenders, jails, judges, law enforcement, and family law agencies to effectively share, access, and query local court data and case files in real time, everyone on the same page having access to the information. 
the CCIF pilot has been so successful that the state of Florida awarded the county a $1.8 million grant to implement this model for information sharing statewide. That really is sort of reuse at a large scale. In the future, data elements from the CCIS can be reused, adapted, extended, not just in the state of Florida, but across the communities in this country. So I want to congratulate you on this achievement. I also want to introduce Tony Landry, the CIO for the Valencia County Florida Court. First, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Tony. Um, the clerk of the circuit court accepting the award on behalf of the team. So Tony, looking, uh, looking to um, understand uh, a little bit more about this project from you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I hope I can do nearly as good a job as Joe did on, on his explanation of what's going on in Kansas. But here in, in Florida, um, over the last few years, um, the, judici the judici if I can say that word, judiciary um, has really started putting a lot of emphasis on being able to gain access to court records, not just court records, but the documents themselves statewide from any location, um, real time, so that the judges can make accurate and fair decisions on uh, cases that are before them. And in order to do that, um, we really needed to upgrade our infrastructure. Um, prior to this, we had a, a CCIS 2.0. It was mostly a batch process that each clerk system throughout the state uh, downloaded some batch information that was then FTP'd up to the state, and the state consumed the information. And, and the next day, the judges had you know, stale data. Um, our migration and transformation into real time has really made the whole system much more reliable and usable. Um, now you don't have to wait 24 hours to validate your data. Now the judges get to be able to see um, petitions as they're coming over the counter to the local clerks. It allows everybody to do their business much more efficiently than, than previously done. And a lot of this was, was possible because of NEEM. And, and in our particular situation, NEEM had its most value in its ability to communicate um, data in a way that was standardized. Um, because the technology behind this really isn't that hard. Getting the technologists to agree on how to communicate, that would have been the hard part and Neem solved that for us. So um, we really appreciate having this standard to be able to, to use and be able to leverage to be able to, to move forward at a much quicker pace than we would have been able to otherwise. And uh, as a reward for all of that great hard work, we have a, a video for you that you can reuse to tell the story in Florida. Thank you. The Best of Neem Comprehensive Case Information System 3.0 Story. In Florida, most criminal and civil cases start at the circuit court level, including family court proceedings. There are 20 circuit courts throughout the state of Florida, including 67 clerk's offices, each of which handle a host of cases and millions of public records. Public defenders, jails, judges, law enforcement officers, and family law agencies across the state use local court data and case files every day. However, currently there is no way to access local court data on a real-time statewide basis. Instead, data is collected in many different standalone systems, resulting in inaccuracies and creating resource inefficiencies. For example, in a custody proceeding, different systems would have to be searched for pleadings, domestic abuse convictions, adoption files, drug charges, and other information to make an informed custody decision. Without a complete view of a family's case, justice may not be served. CCIS 3.0 is a standardized, centralized system that allows this crucial information to be shared, accessed, and queried in real time by providing access across agencies and jurisdictions with accurate, up-to-the-minute court data. Family court judges can make decisions that are in the best interest of families and children. The CCIS 3.0 pilot has been so successful that the FCCC was awarded a $1.8 million grant to implement CCIS 3.0 statewide. The state also plans to use CCIS 3.0 
for statewide reporting and analytics, local criminal justice information sharing, centralized public access applications, and more. CCIS 3.0 was created using NEEM, a common vocabulary that enables efficient information exchange across diverse public and private organizations. NEEM can save time and money by providing consistent reusable data terms and definitions and repeatable processes. Through NEEM, CCIS 3.0 could use what already exists, which meant faster planning, development, and implementation of CCIS 3.0. Flexible, extendable, and reliable, NEEM works well to integrate disparate systems. Now, systems across the state of Florida can talk to each other, allowing agencies to be more efficient, saving money, and making better, faster decisions. In the future, data elements from the CCIS 3.0 could be reused, adapted, and extended, not just in the state of Florida, but in communities across the country. New NEEM users can leverage what already exists and engage directly with our members of the NEEM community for assistance. And that's the power of NEEM. Congratulations to both of our winners. You truly do represent the best of NEEM. I have been at every Best of Meme um, award ceremony, um, and boy, you fit in right into that alumni. We're looking to put you on the Hall of Fame um, and uh, continue to tell your stories. Um, there are more videos from the Best of Meme and all things at uh, the Meme website and Meme Connect uh, YouTube channel. Um, if you want to sort of know about how to get started with Meme, um, the best place to go is the Meme website. Uh, free training is available. Um, uh, some of the artifacts of people's sort of success stories, things that they've done in the past, all available on the NEEM website. So with that, I want to turn it over to Doug to facilitate the question and answer portion. Um, and I look forward to hearing your questions. We had one on the chat. Dwayne was asking for the UML content of NEEM. We're posting that to GitHub very soon. Um, and you'll be able to um, get it in uh, the open source uh, environment there. So Doug? Thank you, Donna, and I appreciate the uh, content. Certainly, congratulations to our recipients in, in the best of NEEM, uh, Joe and uh, Tony. Thank you for covering uh, both uh, the Kansas KBI and Volusia County today. We're, again, great to see a, a state level and local level uh, NEEM recipients. Uh, we've, we've had a couple of questions in the, in the chat box and appreciate our own attendees and experts jumping in to, to answer those. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but I think one, one question that comes up quite frequently, Donna, is uh, one of the areas that we've got to address is a broader NEEM training. So could you kind of cover what the opportunities are for, for NEEM training and who delivers that to our uh, public sector audience? Sure. So um, we do have the free online training that's available 24-7, 365, um, that's accessible via NEEM.gov. Um, we also offer classroom training um, kind of on demand as well as uh, organizations that have a critical mass of employees that have to all be trained at once. Um, if you contact the NEEM program through, uh, there's a contact us form on NEEM.gov or you can email us at information at NEEM.gov. Um, either of those ways, you can contact us and just kind of let us know um, your interest, and we can work with you to, to identify an instructor um, to come out and kind of give you guys uh, the NEEM training based upon your needs. Very good, Christina. Thank you. Well, we have reached uh, the top of the hour uh, and the end of our webinar today, and so we're not going to have a chance to really address any more questions, but I would like to certainly uh, thank our co-hosts today and our partner in crime, the NEEM PMO. Certainly thank Donna and uh, Christina for all of their great work on our uh, event here and for what they bring to the, the data sharing and information exchange community within the, within the country. And again, congratulations again to our best of NEEM winners. I want to thank Maria for joining us from the newest NEEM domain in surface transportation and DOT. And that's obviously uh, important and exciting to hear as these NEEM domains grow. Uh, I, I certainly want to thank all of our attendees today. You know, we had a large group, and I appreciate you uh, staying in there and, and hanging in there with, with all this content. And I hope that uh, for those of you who answered 
uh, our question around your knowledge of NEEM and your awareness that you've got a greater awareness of NEEM and its opportunities today for your particular government organization or your uh, private company. Uh, I do want to apologize for technical difficulties for some folks uh, who were unable to join the webinar today via the webinar platform. They may have been able to get on the on the voice call, but they weren't able to access the webinar. We had some initial technical di difficulties from Adobe, our webinar platform provider, uh, and again, they uh, they corrected that. And again, we apologize for that difficulty. We are going to immediately post uh, the recording of the webinar, so as a registrant, you will get that link, and so you will be able to actually uh, go through and, and watch the complete webinar again. So again, on behalf of uh, NASIO and the NASIO membership, uh, I thank you for attending the webinar today, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you all.